I ended up paying my apartment off my credit card. You paid for your rent on your credit card? You were just pushing off the financial problems you need to be addressing right now. I liquidated my assets. How much did you liquidate? I invested 5000 and I liquidated all of it. Hi, my name is Jace Merkel. I am a college student and I'm calling in from Chicago, Illinois. And I'm 23 years old. And are you working while you're in college or just a full-time college student? Um, I actually graduated college in December, so straight out of college. Uh, but I'm not working yet, but I've been applying to many jobs. And do we have any job right now? No, not currently. So my next question would be, how much do you make a year? But right now, no income at all. Yeah, right now. And did you work at all while you're in college or what did that look like? Yeah, I worked during college, um, but then some things have happened um, and I had to leave my job. Um, but currently I'm like, trying to find a position that um, I would be good in, um, something in environmental sustainability, because that's why I studied it back in college. Um, maybe communications as well. And so how much are you making in your job in college? Um, I was making $20 an hour. And how many hours a week were you working there? I was working 22 hours a week. Okay. And what are your current, like, future career goals and, and aspirations? Um, as for career goals, um, I want to start building my own business, um, start out with working in corporate and eventually taking that money and using it to fund my personal um, businesses that I'm thinking about. And then... Um, Career goals, I really want something that has to deal with people, um, environmental sustainability and business, things like that. And on a scale of one to 10, where'd you kind of rate your current financial situation? One being horrific, 10 being picture perfect. I would say a three. <laughs> okay. And why would you put yourself at a three right now? I put myself at a three because I feel like for the past couple of months, I haven't been so good with my financials. Um, I have a lot of credit cards um, that has like a bunch of debt on there. Um, and then my student loans, that is a lot of debt as well. Um, and then my credit score is not that best. So I would say a three. Okay. So a lot of debt, it sounds like. On that, we'll, we'll talk about debt. So credit cards, what is the total balance on your credit cards right now? Currently, I have about 3000 or so of credit card. 3000 yeah, three thousand. So, do you have a? You said one credit card to me that's fourteen hundred dollars. Is there another card somewhere else, or did that card go yeah, three thousand dollars? That one, no. There's another card as well, but it's it's currently with collections, so I have like a thousand five hundred into collections. Jace, so someone got you to sign up for a credit card while you're in college, and you didn't learn how to pay it off, or you got to pay that money back. What happened there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I took out a Best Buy credit card and I bought a computer with it. And it was good. You know, I started paying off, but then it was until like things were, I got into like a apartment deal. Um, so I was paying for my apartment and then like it was harder to pay off my credit card. And so I ended up paying my apartment off my credit card and paying my- You paid for your rent on your credit card? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, lesson learned. <laughs> Three thousand dollars credit card debt at twenty three years old is not a good spot to be. In. Um, the beautiful thing is you have your whole life ahead of you, so we can get out of this debt in the next couple months, and then we gotta start attacking other debt, and then you can start the fun, which is building wealth and saving invest. Other debt we have student loans. What's the total balance on that? Uh, currently, I think it's. Let me take a look for you. I think it should be like thirty two thousand. Yeah, thirty two thousand. So $32,000, and I'm assuming those payments will resume for you in about June or July this year since you just graduated? Exactly, yeah. Okay, so we've got a few months to get a job to start figuring out what is the plan for that. Any other debt besides the student loans and the credit cards? No. Assets, what assets do we have? Currently, I have a car. It's really it. I have a car. <laughs> What's the car worth, roughly? Honestly, I'm thinking about $6,000. And there's no car loan on that? No. Do we have anything in the bank account right now? $60 count. It counts. It's not much, but it counts. Yeah. <laughs> $60. Okay. So we got $60 in our bank account, 6000 in the car, and then the debts we have is $35,000. So your net worth is just about negative $29,000. Does that sound about right? Exactly. Yeah, that sounds about right. Have you ever calculated your net worth before? Yeah, I have. Beautiful thing is, 23 years old, you have your whole life ahead of you to turn this around and let's start measuring and let's start tracking it so you can see the progress. Um, bad news is it's negative right now. I'll put you at a two probably because we have no income and we have a lot of debt, $35,000 of debt. 
credit card debt especially is what I don't like to see. The student loans I'm not as worried about because you have six months on those. Um, the credit card's what I'm not excited about at all. So before we dive into the monthly expenses, your monthly budget, let's talk about your childhood and upbringing. Where are you from and what was your childhood like growing up? Yeah, um, so I was born in Haiti and I moved to here with my parents in 2010 after the earthquake. And I had a good childhood. My parents also did have some financial problems. Um, but my mom, I've learned that she saves a lot. And that's how we were able to get the condo that we're in by her. Um, she made like around like $10 some or so an hour, but she was able to save part of her income every month to have that good foundation to put on a down payment on a house. Not making a ton of money, $10 an hour, but she was still able to save money, live below her means to save money to be able to help for housing. Exactly. Did uh, do your parents ever talk to you about money or had they through the course of your life at all? Um, no, actually not really. Yeah. Um, my parents would just like get a job. <laughs> That's really it. Let's talk about your current budgeting process then. So just graduated from college. You were making, you said about 30,000 a year while you're in college working part-time. What has your budgeting process been last year while you're working and now without having a job, what's your budgeting process look like? My budgeting process look like taking away all my debt and also investing. Um, and after I left my job because I had to do some things. Um, that's been really hard for me because then I don't have an accurate, um, I'm not, this, like my income is not really accurate because like I'm not making any income. So like if, um, for example, you know, I try selling some stuff on Facebook Marketplace, trying to get a bit of income um, from that. I'm usually using that towards my personal expenses and not my debt. Okay. So... One thing we didn't touch on, you said you were investing. What are you investing in? How much investments do you have right now? I liquidated my assets, liquidated, liquidated my assets because um, I really did needed the money for car fixings and like other stuff. Okay. So how much did you liquidate? It was, I think I invested 5,000 and I liquidated all of it. Oh, wow. Okay. And was that all like a taxable brokerage account? Was that a retirement account? What kind of account was that in? That was in, that was on M1, M1 Finance. Okay, so a tax or brokerage account in there. It wasn't It wasn't like a 401k or a Roth IRA? No. Okay. Still not good to be liquidating investments, especially at your age, because that just sets a bad precedent for the future. Um, because it's kind of people like, oh, you can withdraw money for a 401k or Roth IRA. But the issue is once you start giving yourself an inch, like, oh, it's only $100 or only $1,000 I take from it, that just opens up the floodgates for two years from now, five years from now, you build that account back up. You're like, oh, I'll only take a little bit of money again and just instills bad habits. Um, so liquidating like a taxable broker should have to pay off credit card debt, I have no issue with because credit card debt has a super high interest rate, but living expenses, it's very difficult. So that's what, that's in the past. So we can't change that, but let's figure out a plan to move forward so we can build up an emergency fund. That's why emergency funds are very important. So you have an emergency fund so that when stuff happens with your car or don't have a job, you can live off of your savings versus pulling money from investments because that money over the next 30, 40 years would have compounded and been worth a lot more money uh, when you're 65 years old. So, mm -hmm. um, okay. So let's kind of dive through your, your monthly expenses that you send over then. So I'm assuming you're living at home right now because we have no rent and $60 for home utilities. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. I mean, without a job, that's great because very low overhead expenses then. We've got car insurance, $100, and gas, $120. Groceries, $150. So your total necessities are $430. Subscriptions, $150. What type of subscriptions are those? Wait, I actually messed up on the subscriptions. It's not $150. Um, subscriptions is like $4, I think $5. Was so. that $150 supposed to be for eating out? Yeah, I think I think so. Is that accurate to put $150 for eating out? Or is what number do you think should go there? I'd say $100. $100, okay. And then we have 70 for personal care, 35 for pet. So that brings your total living expenses to $639. And then our minimum payment on our credit card right now is $116. Mm -hmm. And then the other money's in collection. Student loans obviously have not started again. So that means you need $755 after taxes to survive right now and just pay for your basic living. On the income side, is it absolutely zero right now or what's what's happening? I know you said you do some stuff on Facebook. What does it typically look like on a monthly basis right now? On a monthly basis, um, from Facebook Marketplace, selling some things online, um, 
and then like receiving money from my family like gifts and stuff um and then I work but it's like an on-call job so like I interpret online but it's only for the minute that I interpret so if I interpret for like a minute I get paid 69 cents for that minute so I do that also it's on a monthly basis where does that land you would you say I would say I get about a hundred dollars or so from that interpreting okay and how long have you been without the job um I've been without a job for a couple months since November of 2023 in terms of monthly expenses, our expenses aren't outrageously high. It's not like you have two, three thousand, four thousand dollars in monthly expenses or apartment, whatever else in between. Um, seven hundred fifty-five dollars, which is a low amount since you're living at home, that you can figure out how can we make seven hundred fifty dollars, five dollars a month, so we can at least stay out of debt or not add any more debt to the table. And the first thing, obviously, is, is income comes to that. So, what type of jobs are you looking for right now? And have you gone? Yeah, what type of jobs are you looking for right now? Currently, I'm looking for two different types of jobs, um, something that pays salary and something that just pays um, hourly, whichever comes first, honestly, um, because I'm really on a tight schedule to start paying some debt off. But like currently, I'm, I've am i been sending many applications into corporate offices, but haven't gotten any answers back. Um, and then I've applied locally as well to some of the companies and places nearby and still haven't heard anything back from those people as well. Okay, so are you applying to like restaurants, retail shops, or what type of local companies are you applying to? Yeah, retail shops, like pharmaceutical. Have you gone to like restaurants for like hostess jobs or server jobs that you can try to get so you can have income coming in quickly? No, I haven't applied to those. That That's something I'd frankly look at sooner than later because, I mean, a lot of restaurants are looking for workers, people to help. Um, even if it is just a, a hostess job or a server job, if it means you can you can make over a thousand dollars a month being a hostess or a server, and or it's a retail shop at a mall, I don't care what it is, but that's the first course of business is to be able to pay off debt as we need income coming in. Without income coming in, it's gonna be very it's gonna be impossible to pay off debt, and make any progress on this. So that doesn't even be the end all be all goal. Hey, let's go be working a restaurant for the rest of our life. But hey. And that, that needs to be phase one while you continue to apply every single day for 10, 15, 20 jobs, whatever it is that are your skill set and your long-term goals in corporate America, in the interpreting world. I don't care wherever it is, but goal number one needs to be applied as many retail, local retail, local restaurants as quickly as possible. Drive there, ask for applications, and figure out where you can get a job tomorrow, the next day, whatever it is, $15 an hour or whatever servers make plus tips. Um, but that's something you need to be doing as quickly as possible because we need income coming in. Frankly, you're not going to need to work 40 hours a month to be able to pay your current bills. Um, obviously, 40 hours is better, but that will at least allow you to working 20 hours, working 15 hours, allow you to pay your bills so we're not going into any more debt and you at least cover your living expenses, uh, the bare necessities with car insurance, gas, groceries, um, and utilities that are contributing around the house. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Is that something you're willing to try? Mm -hmm. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah, um, I'll take a look into that. And then if you, if you, frankly, what I'd be doing if I was you in that situation is, okay, if you can go get a job as a hostess or at Walmart, at Publix, at Target, one of these places, and they're paying you, say, we'll just call it $15 an hour. If you can go and get 40 hours a week there, I mean, you'll be bringing in after taxes about $2,000 a month and give or take. And you do that during the day while you're applying at night towards these full-time jobs that you're trying to get a forty, fifty, eighty thousand dollars salary, whatever that looks like for your career path and goals you're applying to. But during that time, you're making two thousand dollars a month working retail, working at a restaurant, working at a grocery store, and that allows you to cover your seven hundred fifty-five dollars in monthly expenses, give you an extra a thousand to twelve hundred dollars a month to pay off one credit card, basically almost a full the first month. The second month would clear that up. The third month, you'd be taking the leftover the second month plus a third month of money to go pay off the collections. And guess what? We're out of debt in three months if we do that. So that's what I'd be doing and hustling on that. And that doesn't has nothing to do with if you go get another full-time job that's paying you a lot more, hey, guess what? We'll stop the other job and you're going to have more income. You'll continue to live at this $755 a month until you get out of this credit card debt. And then you can start figuring out how can you start saving and investing for the future at that point. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Is that Thank something you. you had thought about before? Yeah, that's why I was applying to um, both corporate and just hourly jobs because then I, I could start out with the hourly and pay off my debt. That's where the goal needs to be right now because you have no 
rent or mortgage, it puts you in a good spot where living at home, contributing to groceries, contributing to food, contributing to utilities, keep that overhead super low. You get that first full-time paying job, you're going to be able to knock out the student loans really quickly um, and get out of this. But yet, yeah, in the interim, it needs to be hustling to make money to pay off this debt, the credit card debt, um, while you're applying to other jobs. So that when you start getting your big paycheck, hey, we don't have money going to credit card debt, we don't have collections, and it puts you in a much better financial situation. So, okay. Let's look through these monthly expenses then. So this was in November 8th to December 6th. So did you have a job during this time period or no? Um, November to, I, I think so, maybe. I think so. So I see a lot of transfers, it looks like, between your different accounts. Okay, so you're, this is one thing too, is it looks like you have a savings account or you have two different savings accounts, it looks like. Uh, they're actually two, like they're debit cards, but um, I just use them interchangeably. Like one of them, I could just put money on there and then like all the bills are taken out into that one account and the other one I just use for like regular. It looks like you're using both of them on your debit card because both of them have, one has $447 or $449 worth of transaction on the debit card. The other one has $2,000 worth of transactions. So it looks like you're using them, kind of using both of them. And what I would do is I would use like, you need to have one account that's a savings account. That's that's where you end up putting your emergency fund and savings. And the other account is where all your income comes in and all your expenses go out. But right now it looks like you're kind of doing mixture of expenses on both, which causes it just to be more complex. And it's more difficult to figure out how much money you're spending, where all your money's going, if you kind of have stuff transferring back and forth. I see that on here. You kind of transfer money back and forth between different accounts, which frankly confuses me. And I'm assuming if you look at it, it kind of confuses you where different money's going. Mm -hmm. And I see some different things. I mean, subscription, YouTube TV. Looks like we're traveling Frontier Airlines in November. Oh, yeah. Yes. I went to visit my brother in Florida. Yeah. Okay. So, and then another flight back Air Mexico, was that coming back from Florida or is that going somewhere else? That's going to Mexico. Where are you going to Mexico for? I, I went to Mexico already, um, but I went on a trip to Mexico after vacation. For fun? So after graduation, I went to um, Costa Rica, Guatemala, and Mexico. So fun with some friends? Yeah. Jace, we are we're traveling. I'm all for celebration, but when you're traveling, going to these fun places, when you've got $1,500 in collections and $1,500 in another credit card, you're just pushing off the inevitable and pushing off the financial problems you need to be addressing right now. Yeah, I know. I was trying to do that, but it didn't work. So we're here, step one. So that that means we need to cut whatever plans and travel you have. You need to make sure you are putting those on pause until we get this credit card debt paid off. Because you're inherently, you're not just, if you pay $500 for a flight somewhere, you're not just paying that $500, you're paying $500 plus your 28% interest instead of paying down your credit card debt. So you're just paying more money on that than the actual $500. And you keep that around for a full year, you're paying an extra $100 or whatever on that flight. And you've got $3,000 with a credit card debt right now, which is not a good spot to be in, so you should not be traveling, should not be eating out, these types of things when you have. Um, and I understand even during this time you had a job, we're making some money, but again, we forego paying off the debt to travel during this time period when we had income coming in. And that puts you in a bind then when you don't have a job, don't have income, is you could have been paying this debt off when you had that job. Now you don't have the job, you don't have the income, and it makes it harder to pay off debt. And the rest of these, I mean, we have Publix, Nothing Bunt Cake, which Nothing Bunt Cake is phenomenal. I love that place. Can't really get mad at you for that, but $20 on desserts, not the wisest thing right now. Um, oh, and then you went to Nothing Bunt Cake again seven days later for $13. Um, Walmart, McDonald's, Walmart again on this first card. So the first debit card, $449 worth of transactions. And then the next month, we have a bunch of stuff on Groupon. I'm assuming, is that for your traveling? Yeah, yeah, that was just for some activities in Chicago that I wanted to do. Same thing there is putting the entertainment activities first before prioritizing your long-term financial health. Is The short-term gratification of these activities, whatever it is, is just putting you further behind financially and putting you in a father's spot. What I would like you to be is in a spot where you're putting that money towards your debt. And then guess what? When you're out of debt, hey, let's allocate more money towards these activities and start spending on the things that you enjoy in life so that you can do that out of a place without having to worry how you're going to make a credit card payment next month. I mean, eating out, Panera, JCPenney for $10. We got Target, Panera again, big Panera person. It looks like more Panera transactions. 
three or four Paneras in a row. <laughs> yeah, I was taking a look at my statements. It was not the healthiest habit. We've got another flight for $254 for American. We withdrew $140 at the ATM. We withdrew another $500 at the ATM. What are those, what's that $640 you withdrew for? Um, That was a transaction that someone said, I think someone had sent me some money so that I could process a transaction for them, but it wasn't like my own personal money. Then we got another Spirit flight for $202. So between the American, the Air Mexico, the Frontier, and the Spirit, we have at least $600, maybe $700 in traveling right there, which doesn't account for whatever money you spent when you were on this vacation. So $700 pays off half of this $1,500 credit card balance card. So these, again, these are the choice you have to make is, hey, is this travel worth it or is getting out of debt? So then you can start allocating money towards traveling a better situation. And frankly, I'd be going, hey, let's pay off this debt for go to the vacation for a few months. It's not it doesn't it's not the rest of your life. It's a few months in the situation out of debt and then you're going to start um spending money on on things you want. But during this transaction you said 640 that was transacting for a friend, but we still have $1350 worth of transactions during this time period that's spent on home goods, the cleaners, Panera, Forever Beauty, traveling, these flights, plus the other card is another $499. You basically spent $2,000 in this time period. And these are things that when you are living at home, you have low expenses and you have credit card debt, that money needs to be going towards these debts versus putting his money towards entertainment and travel and those types of things. Because I can promise you feel a lot better getting out of debt, being out of debt than um, those vacations. were. Obviously, I'm sure they were fun, but I can also promise you Going on vacation debt-free will be a lot more fun once all the debt's paid. Because then you don't have to think about where you're on vacation. Hey, I'm about to swipe this credit card, swipe this debit card. I'm not going to make my credit card payment next month. Or I only have $50 in my bank account right now. What am I going to do when the utility bills do? Or when YouTube TV starts trying to pull money out of my bank account? So these are things you have to start figuring out and learning how much money you spend in different areas. And it all comes down to budgeting. And so there's a lot of different tools you need to use for budgeting. I use one called Copilot. There's stuff like Monarch, Every Dollar. You need a budget and they all have integrations with your bank accounts that you can link up your bank accounts and they'll start categorizing them for you. So you'll say, hey, you spend this much money on travel last month. You spend this much money on food and you never know how much money you're spending on expenses really until you track it because those 30, 40, $20 transactions don't seem like much. But when you go to Panera six times in a row and they're all $15, that money adds up really quickly. So, but really, I guess my, my main suggestions or things for you right now is first and foremost, you need, need to be budgeting. Even though you don't have a full-time job right now, don't have income coming in, you need to understand where every single dollar of your money is going, whether it is going towards utilities, going towards groceries. You need to know every every single dollar where it's going. They're using a budget tool. Number two is getting a job. This is basically need, just as important as number one. But you need a job to be able to start paying off this debt and start paying your bills. And that means hustling at restaurants, hustling at retail places. And once you get a job there, hustle working 30, 40 hours a week there. And then in the nighttime, hey, applying towards a dream job, applying towards a full-time salary job. Once you have a job, whether it's in retail or a full-time job, whatever comes first, you need to be following your budget and start allocating every single dollar towards debt. Every single dollar of that $700 a month needs to be going towards debt. So if you're making $1,500 or $2,000 a month after taxes at these hourly jobs, hey, guess what? You have an extra $800 a month to pay towards these debts. You can start paying off these credit card bills pretty quickly. You have $800. It, it takes discipline. You're not going to be able to go travel to Cancun or Mexico or wherever else you're going to go visit your brother and spend three or four hundred dollars on flights but you can throw eight hundred dollars towards a three thousand dollar credit card bill and guess what that's gone in a few months debt collections is something you have to figure out too is how can you get that debt paid off as well there budgeting finding a job and start attacking this debt and start with a credit card debt that is not in collections and then go to the collections one and then after that start looking at the student loans because you have about six months before those that interest starts accruing and the last thing I want you to do is sit here and pay the minimum payments on that for the next 20 years and wake up and you still have those payments 20 years from now. Because your balance at 5% and you pay the minimum payments probably is not going to go down much. You'll wake up 10, 20 years from now and it might be $20,000. It might be $15,000. But I don't want you to be that. I want you to have a goal of $32,000. Can I pay that off in the next two years? Challenge yourself. It's not going to be easy paying over $1,000 a month towards this debt. But if you get a job you're making $50,000 a year or $60,000 a year, and after taxes, you're making four thousand. Keep your expenses super low, fifteen hundred dollars a month max. Hey, guess what? You have you might be living at home for the first year, and that will give you an extra two thousand dollars a month towards throwing towards these student loans. You can get most of that paid off in the first year. That's I'd be doing hustling so that hey, you got this debt 
have the ability to live at home, do that. So you paid off a lot quicker. And then when those are paid off, okay, great. Let's start looking at getting an apartment for for yourself. And you're gonna need an emergency fund since you're not living at home. You're gonna need an emergency fund um, built up when you live on your own more than you do right now since you have a lot of expenses taken care of there. But then you start building an emergency fund to start looking at apartments for yourself um, or with roommates to keep your costs lower. And then the fun starts of saving and investing. And that's where the true fund of life kind of starts is, okay, now I can start saving and investing for the future. What is a Roth IRA? What is a 401k? How can I, is there a 401k match at your job? What are these different things you can do? What is a taxable brokerage account? Um, and that's where the fun starts, especially at your age, is you can start making investments and decisions now so that when you're older, you can you can have a lot of money. You can start building generational wealth. You can start um, saving and investing money so that one day you wake up and you're a millionaire. And I think that'd be a great thing for you to have a goal for if that's something you want to do, but that means you can give back to charities. That means you can help your kids through school. That means you can retire and not have to worry about money, but those your financial situation 40 years from now is going to be directly impacted by the choices you make today. And those choices are start living below your means, start paying off debt, and start investing the difference once you're out of debt. That will change the trajectory of your life. And if you wait 10 years, 20 years to start figuring that out, your financial picture is going to be looking a lot different 40 years from now than it would be if you start making those changes today. Does that make sense? Yes, but of course, that makes a lot of sense. I was just taking some notes on what you're saying. Yeah, and I mean, right now, we've got that debt. But like I said, if you pay off this credit card debt in the next couple months, even if it is while you're working a retail job or a part-time hourly job, great. And then once you get that full-time job, maybe live at home for the next 12 months or the next 18 months until you hustle and pay off the student loan debt. And then guess what? Then you start looking at apartments. But if you can save yourself from paying $1,000 or $1,200 a month in rent and all that money goes to student loans the next 12 months, you're going to be in a drastically different spot 12 months from now with that debt paid off. And that's where the fun starts. If you start investing, we'll call it $500 a month from the age of 25, since we'll give you two years to get the debt paid off, until you're 65, do you know how much money you'd have when you're 65 years old if you invest $500 a month into index funds? How much? Give me a guess. It'll be $6,000 a year for 40 years. $6,000 for 40 years. And we're going to account for a 7% annual rate of return on the investments. Maybe half a million? $1.3 million. Not a bad spot to be in, is it? I don't know. It's, it's a heck of a lot better to have $1.3 million than to have no money. So, and these are things that you can start once you're out of debt. And so if you wait until you're 35, it'd only be 600000 versus $1.3 million. Or if you wait until you're 45, it'd be $260,000. So this just shows you have time on your side right now. If you start investing money now, then it's going to just continue to pay dividends for you in the future. I mean, basically every dollar that you invest today is worth like $17 40 years from now. And that allows you just to start thinking about every kind of purchase you make now, what is that doing to affect me? Or credit card debt. I mean, credit card debt, your credit card debt is at probably 28% interest rate. And if you're investing when you have credit card debt, that's just putting you further behind because you're not going to earn 28%, 25% in the stock market every single year. There's risk associated with it, and there's the average return is about 10%. If you're trying to invest when you have credit card debt, it's just putting you further behind. And that's where the fun starts. So, I mean, again, budgeting, getting a job, living below your means, paying off the debt, and then once you're out of debt, hey, let's start investing, saving for the future, building up an emergency fund as well, needs to be involved after paying off debt, um, and then you can start enjoying life and uh, having some fun with it. Does that make sense, Chase? Yes, that makes sense. No, thank you. I really appreciate your advice. Um, I think it's been something that I've been thinking about, but never really had like the reality check of looking into my statements and where do I want to be in the future. If you enjoyed this episode, watch another video. YouTube thinks this video on screen will be your favorite.